The book of Job, chapter 28 through 32. Interlude, where wisdom is found. There is a mine for silver and a place where gold is refined. Iron is taken from the earth, the copper is smelted from ore. Mortals put an end to the darkness. They search out the farthest recess. For ore in the blackest darkness, far from human dwelling, they cut a shaft in places untouched by human feet. Far from other people, they dangle and sway. The earth from which food comes is transformed below as by fire. Lapis lazuli comes from its rocks, and its dust contains nuggets of gold. No bird of prey knows that hidden path. No falcon's eyes can see it. Proud beasts do not sit set foot on it, and no lion prowls there. People assault the flinty rock with their hands and lay bare the roots of the mountains. They tunnel through the rock. Their eyes see all its treasures. They search the sources of the rivers and bring hidden things to light. But there, where can wisdom be found? Where does understanding dwell? No mortal comprehends its worth. It cannot be found in the land of the living. The deep says, it is not within me. The sea says, it is not with me. It cannot be bought with the finest gold, nor can its price be weighed out in silver. It cannot be bought with the gold of Ophir, with precious onyx or lapis lazuli. Neither gold nor crystal can compare with it, nor can it be had for jewels of gold. Coral and jasper are not worthy of mention. The price of wisdom is beyond, beyond rubies. The topaz of Kush cannot compare with it. It cannot be bought with pure gold. Where then does wisdom come from? Where does understanding dwell? It is hidden from the eyes of every living thing, concealed even from the birds in the sky. Destruction and death say only a rumor of its uh, only a rumor of it has reached our ears. God understands the way to it, and he alone knows where it dwells, for he views the ends of the earth and sees everything under the heavens. When he established the force of the wind and measured out the waters, when he made a decree for the rain and a path for the thunderstorm, when he looked at wisdom and appraised it, he confirmed it and tested it. And he said to the human race, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, and to shun evil is understanding. Chapter 29, Job's final defense. Job continued his discourse. How I long for the months of gone by, for the days when God watched over me, when his lamps shone on my head, and by his light I walked through the darkness. Oh, for the days when I was in my prime, when God's intimate friendship blessed my house, when the Almighty was still with me, and my children were around me, when my path was drenched with cream, and the rock poured out for me streams of olive oil. When I went to the gate of the city and took my seat in the public square, the young men saw me and stepped aside, and the old men rose to their feet. The chief men refrained from speaking and covered their mouths with their hands. The voices of the nobles were hushed, and their tongues stuck to the roof of their mouths. Whoever heard me spoke well of me, and those who saw me commanded me, because I rescued the poor who cried for help, and the fatherless who had none to assist them. The one who was dying blessed me. I made the widow's heart sing. I put on righteousness as my clothing. Justice was my robe and my turban. 
I was eyes to the blind and feet to the lame. I was a father to the needy. I took up the case of the stranger. I broke the fangs of the wicked and snatched the victims from their teeth. I thought I will die in my own house, my days as numerous as the grains of sand. My roots will reach to the water and the dew will lie all night on my branches. My glory will not fade. The bow will be ever dew in my hand. People listen to me expectantly, waiting in silence for my counsel. After I had spoken, they spoke no more. My words fell gently on their ears. They waited for me as for showers, and drank in my words as the spring rain. When I smiled at them, they scarcely believed it. The light of my face was precious to them. I chose the way of, for them and sat at their chief. I dwelt as a king among his troops. I was like one who comforts mourners. Chapter 30 But now they mock me, men younger than I, whose fathers I would have disdained to put with my sheepdogs. Of what use was the strength of their hands to me, since their vigor had gone from them? Haggard from want and hunger, they roamed the parched land in desolate wastelands at night. In the brush they gathered salt herbs, and their food was the root of the broom bush. They were banished from human society, shouted at as if they were thieves. They were forced to live in the dry stream beds, among the rocks and in holes in the ground. They prayed among the bushes and huddled in the undergrowth, a base and nameless brood. They were driven out of the land, and now the, those young men mocked me in song. I have become a byword among them. They detest me and keep their distance. They do not hesitate to spit in my face. Now that God has unstrung my bow and afflicted me, they throw off restraint in my presence. On my right, the tribe attacks. They lay snares for my feet. They build their siege ramps against me. They break up my road. They succeed in destroying me. No one can help him, they say. They advance as though a gaping breach. Amid the ruins they come rolling in. Terrors overwhelm me. My dignity is driven away as by the wind. My safety vanishes like a cloud. And now my life ebbs away. Days of suffering grip me. Night pierces my bones. My gnawing uh, gnawing pains never rests. In his great power, God becomes like clothing to me. He binds me like the neck of my garment. He throws me into the mud, and I am reduced to dust and ashes. I cry out to you, God, but you do not answer. I stand up, but you merely look at me. You turn on me ruthlessly. With the might of your hand, you attack me. You snatch me up and drive me before the wind. You toss me about in the storm. I know you will bring me down to death, to the place appointed for all the living. Surely no one lays a hand on a broken man when he cries for help in his distress. Have I not wept for those in trouble? Has not my soul grieved for the poor? Yet, when I hoped for good, evil came. When I looked for light, then came darkness. The churning inside me never stops. Days of suffering confront me. I go about blackened, but not by the sun. I stand up in the assembly and cry for help. I have become brothers, brother of jackals, a companion of owls. 
My skin grows black and peels. My body burns with fever. My lyre litter is tuned to mourning and my pipe to the sound of wailing. Chapter 31 I made a covenant with my eyes not to look lustfully at the young woman. For what is our lot from God above, our heritage from the Almighty in height? It is not ruin for the wicked, disaster for those who do wrong. Does he not see my ways and count my every step? If I have walked with falsehood, or my foot has hurried after a deceit, let God weigh me in honest scales, and he will know that I am blameless. If my steps have turned from the path, if my heart has been led by my eyes, or if my hands have been defiled, then may others eat whatever what I have sown, and may my crops be uprooted. If my heart has been enticed by a woman, or if I have lurked at my neighbor's door, then may my wife grind another man's grain, and may other men sleep with her, for that would have been wicked, a sin to be judged. It is a fire that burns to destruction. It would have uprooted my harvest. If I have denied justice to any of my servants, whether male or female, <clears throat> when they had a grievance against me, what will I do when God confronts me? What will I answer when called to account? Did not he who made in the womb make them? Did not the same one form us both within our mothers? If I have denied the desires of the poor, or let the eyes of the widow grow weary, if I have kept my bread to myself, not sharing it with the fatherless. But from my youth I reared them as a father would, and from my birth I guided the widow. If I have been seen anyone perishing for lack of clothing, or the needy without garments, and their hearts did not bless me, for warming them with the fleece from my sheep. If I have raised my hand against the fatherless, knowing that I had influence on, in court, then let my arm fall from the shoulder, let it be broken off at the joint. For I dreaded destruction from God, and for fear of his splendor, I could not do such things. If I have put my trust in gold, or set to pure gold, you are my security. If I have rejoiced over my great wealth, the fortune my hands <clears throat> had gained, if I have regarded the sun in its radiance, or the <clears throat> moon moving in splendor, so that my heart was secretly enticed, and my hand offered them a kiss of homage, then these also would be sins to the judged, to be judged. For I would have been unfaithful to God on high. <clears throat> if I have rejoiced at my enemy's misfortune, or gloated over the trouble that came to him, I have not allowed my mouth to sin by invoking a curse against their life. If those of my household have never said, who has not been filled with Job's meat? But no stranger had to spend the night in the street, for my door was always open to the traveler. If I have concealed my sin as people do, by hiding my guilt in my heart, because I so feared the crowd, and so dreaded the contempt of the clans, that I kept silent and would not go outside. Oh, that I had someone to hear me! I sign now my defense. Let the Almighty answer me. Let my accuser put his indictment in writing. Surely I would wear it on my shoulder, 
I would put it on like a crown. I would give him on account of my every step. I would present it to him as to a ruler. If my land cries out against me, and all its furrows are wet with tears, if I have devoured its yield without payment, or broken the spirit of the tenants, then let briars come up instead of wheat, and stinkweed instead of barley. The words of Job are ended. Chapter 32, Elihu. So these three men stopped answering Job, because he was righteous in his own eyes. But Elihu, son of Barakel, the Buzite, of the family of Ram became very angry with Job for justifying himself rather than God. He was also angry with the three friends because they had found no way to refute Job and yet had condemned him. Now Elihu had waited before speaking to Job because they were older than he. But when he saw, well, that the three men had nothing more to say, his anger was aroused. So Elihu, son of Barakel the Buzite, said, I am young in years and you are old. That is why I was fearful, not daring to tell you what I know. I thought age should speak, advanced years should teach wisdom, but it is the spirit in a person, the breath of the Almighty, that gives them understanding. It is not the old who are wise, not only the aged who understand what is right. Therefore I say, listen to me, I too will tell you what I know. I waited while you speak, I listened to your reasoning, while you were searching for words. I gave you my full attention, but not one of you has proven Job wrong. None of you has answered his arguments. Do not say we have found wisdom. Let God, not a man, refute him. But Job has not marshaled his words against me, and I will not answer him with your arguments. They are dismayed and have no more to say. Words have failed them. Must I wait? Now that they are silent, now that they stand there with no reply, I too will have my say, I too will tell what I know, for I am full of words, and the spirit within me compels me, inside I am like bottled up wine, like new wineskin ready to burst. I must speak and find relief. I must open my lips and reply. I will show no partiality, nor will I flatter anyone. For if I were skilled in flattery, my Maker would soon take me away. Amen.